Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Christmas is among us. The time of year all about presents, decorations, and getting together to celebrate with the people you love the most. It's also about finding the Krabby Patty secret formula to send to Plankton to get Plankton's holiday hits. I've been scouring Amazon for it, and I will find it one of these days. But if I find it and get scammed, oh boy. The holidays are an awesome time of year with snow, presents, and the lights all around town, and something that gets everybody in the mood for the holidays are the Christmas songs that play on the radio. There are some awesome holiday songs, and everybody has their favorite, but who better to get people hyped up with holiday songs than an anemone? Back in the early to mid 2000s, starting in 2002 during the Christmas season, there were these shorts on Nickelodeon called Merry Nickmas. They were shorts that were Nickelodeon's way of celebrating the holidays. These shorts lasted roughly 30 to 60 seconds and only aired during December. Of course they do, otherwise it wouldn't be Christmas shorts. These were little mini crossovers between all the Nickelodeon cartoon characters at the time. They debuted in December 2002 and had so much charm to them. I have a soft spot for these, and I and countless others remember them so fondly, it's just so sad that Nickelodeon doesn't do this kind of thing anymore, especially considering the cartoons that are on the network these days. Of course you could argue it's because most of the cartoons featuring these characters they used in these shorts aren't airing on the network anymore, not even in reruns, but Nickelodeon still owns these characters and can bring them back if they want to. And there's talk about reboots on the network, so why not try some of these with cartoons like Rocket Power or the Wild Thornberries? But I'm getting off topic. The shorts were cool because they parodied a bunch of regular Christmas media like The Grinch and Frosty the Snowman, but had Nickelodeon characters in these places. Some featured stop motion animation, which is a callback to stuff like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. These were also a way to promote the Christmas specials for these cartoons when December would roll around, and they were just fun to watch all around. There are a handful of these shorts, and I could talk about them all right now, but I feel like just talking about this short in particular, and I'm sure you know what it is. Plankton's Holiday Hits is a parody of all those commercials that advertise Christmas albums. The fact that this stars Plankton automatically gives this short actual purpose and integrity. I remember watching all these shorts back in the day as a kid, but I'm not sure if Plankton's Holiday Hits was the short that came on the least. I do remember this was the short I wanted to see the most, so it probably did come on the least, but that didn't stop me from watching it whenever it came on. This short has Plankton singing parodies of classic Christmas songs, but with his own evil twist, as you'd expect. The short started up talking about how Plankton had smash hit albums in the past. His first album, Born a Chum, Rock the Country, and his next album, Krabby Road, instantly put him at number one on the charts. Who knew Plankton was so talented at singing? It almost doesn't surprise me. Plankton has been shown singing on a few occasions, and those are usually pretty popular among fans. If he tried to make a career around that, he'd probably be more successful than if he actually managed to steal the formula. And now, Sheldon J. Plankton is back with a collection of holiday hits, which is where the word parody comes into play. The songs he sings are Come All Ye Faithful, Joy to the World, Deck the Halls, and The Nutcracker Suite, or as he calls them, Come All Ye Fearful, I'll Rule the World, Deck the Halls, and The Nutcracker Suite. After the last song, it stated that in order to obtain this album, we would have to send the secret recipe for the Krabby Patty to Plankton at the Chum Bucket located in Bikini Bottom, USA. Wait, I thought Bikini Bottom was located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Does that mean that the Pacific Ocean is property of the United States? Maybe it's true. The commercial ends with Plankton wishing a season's beating to us underlings. That's another reason why I'm trying to get that album. I'm tired of Plankton always calling me an underling every year. <gasps> and I think I just found something. Out of all these songs, The Nutcracker is the least altered because since it's well known for being an instrumental, Plankton is just singing to the rhythm, which is what people would do if it's a song like that, or just hum the melody. Out of all the four songs in this CD, I always enjoyed listening to I'll Rule the World and Deck the Halls the most, but I can't really choose which one of them is my favorite. I love the melody of I'll Rule the World and the part where Plankton laughs in the place of the fa la la la, -la from Deck the Halls. The rhythm of Deck the Halls is good too, but Plankton going ha 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 
I just liked more. Of course, I do like the whole short, but those two songs I loved hearing the most. This may be a stretch, but this short might have also inspired some future Spongebob productions as well. There is an episode from season 6 that kinda references this short. Episode 198, Krabby Road, is about Plankton forming a band with Spongebob in another plan to steal the Krabby Patty formula. Both this episode title and the title of Plankton's second album are a reference to everybody's favorite album by the Beatles, Abbey Road. The episode is about music and the title is possibly indirectly taken from this short which is also about music. I remember the first time I saw this episode as a kid. When I saw the title, I thought it was familiar, and soon enough, I remembered it came from this short. The Born a Chum album is a reference to Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, but that has nothing to do with the actual show, but I thought I'd just bring it up anyway since it's still a part of the commercial. I found the formula! The glass bottle broke during transit, so I'm going to use this water bottle to send it to Plankton. If you're wondering why I didn't just have it sent straight there, I have to make sure it's real before I send it to him. Yep, it's real, and if you're wondering how I know it's real, shut up. I'm probably not the first person to say this, but if this was available to the general public, it would fly off the shelves, especially in the 2000s. The fact that this commercial doesn't have a phone number to call is probably so that kids can't call it to order it, let alone without their parents' permission. Also, the fact it's only four short songs makes it feel like the most redundant CD to make and publish in real life. If anything, it would have been awesome if these songs, whether all mashed into one or extended with more lyrics, were included on something like the Spongebob The Best Day Ever CD or the Spongebob Squarepants The Yellow Album. Or even if this, along with all the other Mary Nickmas shorts, were included as part of the special features on something like the Spongebob Christmas DVD from 2003 or even the Spongebob Season 2 DVD. Without YouTube, these would have been lost with time. In conclusion, this short is pretty cool and it might just possibly be my favorite out of the Mary Nickmas shorts. Of course I love all of them and I think the huge crossover specials like the 12 Days of Nickmas and Nickmas Holiday Party are awesome because it's great seeing all these classic Nicktoons characters together in stop motion animation, but sometimes the most simple shorts can be the most enjoyable and this is proof. Of course, this is the only short that has Spongebob characters and only Spongebob characters, so it might be a bit of my bias, but I still love the other shorts seeing the Spongebob characters with the other Nicktoons. I'll probably talk about those at some point in the future, but it's most likely my desire to watch this short in particular stick out in my mind more than most others. Regardless the reason, it'll always have a place in my heart. After that long talk about Plankton's holiday hits, it finally came in the mail today! I can't believe I actually have it after wanting it for so long as a kid. It looks just like I thought it would. Now for the moment of truth. Time to actually listen to it. I listened to it and it turns out whoever sent me this pranked me so hard. This isn't Plankton's Holiday Hits. This is worthless! <gasps> I've been scammed! Since I've been scammed, I don't care to know what this is. But I will say what it is. Not Plankton's Holiday Hits, that's for sure. $100 wasted on the secret formula I sent to Plankton. Well, since I've been scammed, there's only one thing to do now. Later. That's what you get for scamming me! I did it. I saved Christmas.